Judges chapter 16. We're going to be looking at both of these chapters this morning, but for a way of text today, let's look at verse number 28. We don't have you standing forever this morning. I just want to read this one verse. We'll get right into the Word of God today. I believe the Lord has a message for us today. Judges chapter 16, verse 28. Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful today that we have an opportunity to be in your house. We just surrender ourselves to you right now, commit our will to your will, our way to your way, Lord. Just pray, Heavenly Father, have your way in this place this morning. I pray, in the name of God, whatever, dear God, burdens people are carrying today, that you would strengthen them, that you would help them, dear God. Things that are distracting hearts and minds today, dear God. I pray, God, that you remove all distractions from their hearts and minds today, that their focus may be upon you and your word today. We may receive strength from the Master's hand this morning. We may feel your loving embrace. We may feel, dear God, that nearness of the Spirit to our souls. I pray for your anointing upon this message and this messenger today, dear God. Oh, Lord of God, that you just have your way in every heart, every life, every mind, and every soul. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Judges chapter 16, beginning in verse 22, it says, How be it the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaved? Then the Lord of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God, and rejoice. And they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country which slew many of us. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me, that I may fill the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. I want us to pay special attention there to verse 26. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. There were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women. They beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on the which it was borne up of the one with the right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the Lord and upon the people that were therein. So the dead which were slew in his death were more than they which were slew in his life. We've all heard the story of Samson. We, if we've not read the story of Samson, we remember it possibly from children's <coughs> church. And we remember in children's church that, that, that when we would open the book or when they would give us the, the leaflet, the handout that we had for children's church. I don't know about your children's church, your Sunday school class, but when I got it, it always showed Samson as this Hercules looking guy. He just had muscles upon muscles. He, if he was in today's time, uh, he would look like uh, Arnold or, uh, or Rocky or one of those guys. Just a, a very muscular guy is what we would see in those pictures. Uh, but as we begin to look at the Word of God, that may have been possible. Uh, maybe that picture comes from the feats that he did and the things that he accomplished. Uh, but when I think of Samson, I, I think of just an average looking guy. Uh, I think of a, a man who, uh, who was just an average guy, who lived just an average life. But he possessed the power that was given to him by God, a supernatural power. He did great feats for God. We all heard the story of Samson, the great things that he did for God. But we've also heard the falling of Samson. In this chapter, in chapter 16 of Judges, it tells us about the weakness that Samson fell into. I preached a message, matter of fact, I think it was maybe the first message I ever preached here. I preached it quite often, a message entitled, One More Chance, Lord. It's my testimony of what God has did for me in ministry, another opportunity. And I 
I've used these verses of Scripture. Uh, but the other day I began to uh, begin to look at these Scriptures after listening to a minister preach and he brought out the story just briefly uh, in his message and it uh, just stuck with me. And I began to look at the story a little deeper and began to look at this man Samson. Uh, we find uh, here Samson, is, he's in the, the court of his enemies, the Philistines, and they're uh, about to make sport of him. They took him captive. Uh, this is something they could never do before. They could never get a hold of Samson. Uh, Samson wreaked havoc in their lives. Uh, Samson brought great defeat to these people. They wanted to get the upper hand uh, on him. They wanted to uh, take him out. They wanted to stop him. Uh, they wanted to stop uh, his power. They wanted to stop uh, the, the things that he was doing uh, because he was slaying thousands of their men on his own. Uh, he was just doing, he was burning their cities. Uh, he was just doing great things to destroy this enemy and this enemy uh, wanted to stop Samson. Uh, don't that sound familiar verse of scripture that was read to us uh, just last week during revival? Satan desires to have you. Uh, and it may sift you as wheat. Uh, and that's what the Philistines want. They wanted Samson. Uh, they wanted to sift him as wheat. They wanted to make sport of him. They wanted to stop him. Uh, but they couldn't find a way to stop him. Uh, because every day he rose up and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Uh, before Samson did any of these great feats you will find uh, that the spirit of God rose up uh, in him. Uh, we know that in the custom, and we know that uh, through the word of God that spoke of the locks of his hair that he told Delilah finally after she came to him time after time enticing him. Uh, he said it's the locks of my head. Uh, and we find here in chapter 16 uh, of Judges that the locks of his head were taken off uh, as he laid his head uh, in the lap of Delilah and he fell asleep there. Uh, I've heard this preached my whole life. Uh, I've heard it preached this way uh, and I still believe it this way uh, that Samson is an example uh, for you and me. Samson here uh, it, it is an example and a parallel, if you will, uh, of the church. That we have power uh, when we obey what God has told us to do. Uh, it's not about how long his hair was, but it was about the obedience uh, of what God told him where the power line. Uh, he knew where the power line. He knew where the source was at. Uh, in church today, just as Samson, uh, we know where the power lies. Uh, we know where the strength is. Uh, the word of God tells us it's not by might nor by power, uh, but by my spirit. Uh, Thus saith the Lord, it is through the Spirit of God. When the anointing of the Holy Ghost begins to flood our soul, but when we do as Samson did and lay our heads in the lap of the lion, which is a parallel to this world, when we lay our head in the laps of this world and let our anointing be cut off, let our power be cut off, and we do as he did, he found comfort there yeah. in her lap. Yeah. He found so much comfort there that he fell asleep. When he fell asleep, those locks were cut off and the power was there. Many times she had asked him and, uh, and he had told her different things. Uh, and she would come and she'd say, Samson, the Philistines be upon me. Uh, and he rose up and he would slew him. And, uh, and finally this last time, uh, she gave the, the word there. Uh, in Judges chapter 16, she told him, she said, uh, Samson, the Philistines be upon me. Uh, and she told him that, look, they're there. Uh, and he rose up and he rose up with his tire. Uh, when she saw that his heart, was for God. She saw these things. She said, the Philistine be upon thee, Samson. And he woke out of the sleep and said, I will go as in other times before and shake myself. And he went not that the Lord had departed from him. You read that in chapter Samson, or Judges 16 and verse 20. He did, he did not even realize that the Lord had departed from him. Why did he not realize that the Lord had departed from him? Because he fell asleep. He fell asleep and laid his head in the lap of Delilah and found comfort in that place uh, instead of adhering to what God had, had told him to do and what God had told him to be. That's not my message this morning. That's just the foundation to show us uh, where Samson was at. Now Samson is here. Yeah. He's been defeated by the Philistines and said they poked his eyes out. His eyes were gone, and now this great man, Samson, who did great and mighty feats, had been wreaking havoc for the Philistines, though now they was rejoicing. Uh, don't you know this morning that all of hell rejoices uh, when God, uh, when God's man is taken down? Don't you know that all of hell rejoices uh, when a woman throws up her hands uh, and says, I'm going down to defeat? Don't you know uh, that all of hell rejoices? Uh, because that means that Sister May read into our hearing uh, at the end of Sunday school class, uh, she began to read that. I said, what's she reading that for? That don't have to do with that. That's getting on my message. Uh, she began to read the verse there uh, that if there is no vision, people perish. No vision, people 
pictures, right? Now, Samson, no doubt he lost his vision. His eyes were plugged down. And that's a direct representation of the church. That the church, the eyes of the church have been plucked out because so many today, so many leaders, so many uh, great men, men of God, men, women of God that did great and mighty things for God that were powerhouses for God. Uh, they, they, they've seen great and mighty wonders. They've seen great and mighty feats. Now their vision is gone. Their desire is gone. Uh, they've laid their head in the lap of the world. They've fallen asleep. Their power's been cut off. Uh, and now Satan's there making sport of them. Uh, Satan is there just wreaking havoc in their life. Uh, and as they look, they can hear. Uh, there's many today that they can just hear. They can hear uh, all of hell just giggling at them. Uh, they can hear all uh, just the shell. Samson, here he is, standing there. Uh, you imagine this man, this pitiful sight that he must have been, standing there uh, with his eyes plucked out. Uh, and they nothing to the man that they knew him to be. Uh, and they said this line, they said, line, uh, young man, we want you to go against Samson. No doubt this young man had heard about Samson his whole life. He'd heard about the great feats of Samson. Oh, what an honor, Brother Cunningham, it was for him to go against Samson. Uh, they, they sent him in there after Samson. He was going to get this uh, this great man of God, this man that was so uh, full of power, this man that was uh, so full of power that uh, every kid wanted to beat him. Uh, he probably was a superhero of that time. Uh, nowadays in time, uh, you, you've got all these superheroes that uh, children want to be, and no doubt uh, that's how Samson was in that day. Uh, and this young man, he went to, to find Samson only to find a shell of what he thought he was. Brother Joe, as he looks at Samson, this great man that, that he had heard about, and he, and he walked up to him. Word of God doesn't tell us of an encounter that took place with this lad and Samson. Uh, Word of God does not tell us what took place. It only tells us there was a lad that held him by the hand. Uh, that means that, that lad had to go and get him. That means that lad had to go and leave him out uh, and bring him out. Uh, but I can't help but to think that there was possibly a conversation that took place there uh, that day as that lad took uh, Samson by the hand as he came in and said, Mr. Samson, uh, they sent me to bring you out. Uh, that you may make sport for them. They sent me uh, for you. Uh, but he began to to say, uh, uh, sir, do you mind if you would if you would please answer me a few questions? Yes, son, I'll answer you a few questions. Mr. Sampson, I just gotta know, is it true? Is it true that that you did great feats? Is it true that you caught a hundred foxes and took firebrands uh, and turned them tail to tail and sent them through a city and burned up that whole city? I can't help but think as that conversation possibly took place uh, that Samson hung his head and he said, yes, son, uh, it is true. Uh, it says in Judges 15, uh, verses 4, 15 and 16, Samson went and called 300 foxes, uh, took firebrands, turned tail to tail, uh, and put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. Verse 15, uh, and he found a new jawbone of an ass uh, and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. Uh, and Samson said with the jawbone of an ass, he some upon heaps, uh, with the jawbone of an ass, uh, have I slain a thousand men. Uh, and that young man said, Mr. Samson, uh, I, I've just got to ask you this. Is it true that you slew all of those men with the jawbone of an ass by yourself? Is that true? Mm -hmm. Samson said, yes. It's true, son. It's true. He said, sir, bid me. And I may ask you one more thing. I heard there was a time that you took the gates of the city upon your back. Are you that same Samson that did that? He's looking at him. He's thinking in his mind, there's no way this could be the same Samson that did that. Are you the same Samson that did that? Uh, Samson laid in verse uh, 3 of Judges 16. And Samson uh, lay till midnight. And arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two poles and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the hill that was before Hebron. Mr. Samson, was that you? Was that you, the one that is here today in the Philistine court? 
Those that you slew thousands of, they brought you here to make sport of you. You're, you. You have no eyes, and I'm fixing to lead you out there. But uh, Mr. Samson, I just said to know, was that you? Yes, son, uh, that was me. That was me before I fell uh, into the vice of Satan. That was me before my locks uh, were taken off. That was me uh, before I came into the law, the seducing spirit. Uh, yes, son, that was me, but there's nothing I can do about that now. Uh, that was me. That was who I was. That was yesterday. Uh, that is days gone by. Now I am a defeated foe. Now I am a, in, in the enemy's camp and I'm held captive by them. Uh, and now I just got to go out and make sport for them, son. Just leave me out. I can't help with that little boy, that lad. Can't help with it. He thought this way because my children are this way. And I actually did this to a pastor last year at kids camp. I asked this pastor this question. I said, man, your son saw your son not too long ago and somebody told him to do a backflip. I said, he just did a backflip right there. He said, I didn't want nothing to it. And the fellowship hall just... He said, yeah, I used to be able to do that too. He said, matter of fact, back when I was in high school, I did that. He said, I was in athletics and all of that. He said, I could do an a, a backflip. This man's up in his age, probably mid-40s, I guess now. I looked at him and I smiled and I said, well, do it again. Do it now. But I can't do it now. My children begin to play with them. Begin to do things with them. I, I, I can take Grace in and just begin to, to play with her. Take and hold her up in the air. Or, or hold her up on my feet. Or flip her over. Just do anything playing around with her. And I know your kids are the same way coming up. And some of you that have little ones now. You get this now. You'll do it. They'll say, do it again. And you'll do it again. They'll say, do it again. Okay, do it again. Do it again. Before you know it, you've done it a thousand times. Your war slap out. And man, they're just pumped up. Well, do it again. Well, Samson, is in, this question was being asked to him by this lad. Uh, Samson, are you the same one? Man, there was something just rising up in this. Man, you're the Samson. I'm meeting the Samson uh, that they carried the gates upon the city that tied boxes, tails together, uh, ran through the city that slew all these men with a trombone of an ass. Uh, oh, man, Samson, you did all that, man. You are uh, that, that man of God. But Samson, you don't look like that man. A man that can do those things. Uh, he said, oh, son, I did all that before my failure. I, I did all that before before I missed it. I, I did all of that, uh, but before the locks of my hair was grown out, I, I can't help but think, Brother Wayne, and that lad just looked at me and said, well, Samson, why don't you do it again? Why don't you do it again? What a challenge that young man possibly brought to him that day. Uh, and Samson thought, this is the end for me. Uh, and Samson thought, I'll never, uh, I'm going to have to go out all the victories that I've had in my life. Uh, I've got to go out as a defeated foe. Uh, after all the victories we've had in our ministry, in our life, uh, Satan wants to tell us, I've got you now. Uh, aha, uh, I've got you in the place that you'll never do anything great for God. Uh, I've got you in the place that you'll never accomplish anything for God. Uh, myself, I don't believe Samson had to die that day. Uh, myself, I don't believe he had to go down in the trash heap uh, that took place that day, uh, but it was the desire of his heart. Uh, he was finished and he went out there. Uh, and that young man looked at him and said, Samson, you did all these things. Yes, son, I did all these things. Well, why don't you do it again? Because yeah. I was before my hair was shaved. I can't help but think, Brother Wayne, did that young man said, Mr. Samson, all due respect, have you, I know you don't have your eyes anymore. But have you felt your head lately? Have you felt your head lately? Verse 22 says, How be it the hair of his head begin to grow again after he was shaved? He said, Mr. Samson, your hair is back. Yeah. Mr. Samson, that you say you need is there. That's no different for us today. See, Samson told the young man, yeah, that was before this encounter. Uh, in Judges 16, 19, and 20, he said and he, she made him to sleep upon her knees and she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head uh, and begin to afflict him and the strength went from him. Uh, and she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. He woke out of his sleep and said, I, I will go out as before times uh, and shake myself and he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. Uh, and said, Samson said, that was before that son that I had that. Uh, he said, oh, Mr. Samson, just feel your head. Uh, feel your head. The locks are still there. There's nothing stopping you. Uh, oh, child of God, this morning, uh, he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, and I'll be with you always, even until the end. Uh, and that same power that Samson had access to 
to. Uh, it was back. Uh, that same power that you feel has been withdrawn from you. We fell, God. We've fallen up short. Uh, he said he wouldn't leave us. Uh, he said he wouldn't forsake us. But he'll be right there. Uh, I believe it was Brother Sal said, God is right there where you left him at. Uh, and the Lord said, come on, Mr. Samson. Uh, you was able to do it before you can do it again. Uh, if God was the same yesterday, today, forever, uh, he's the same God now. Uh, oh, I challenge you this morning if you feel like uh, you've been beaten down, torn down, uh, your eyes have been puffed out, uh, and the devil's making sport of you, and you can hear Satan giggling, uh, saying you're nothing but a failure uh, and a loser, uh, and you'll never do anything for God anymore. Uh, oh, church, we can just rem reminisce of a church gone by. See, today, people want to reminisce of how it used to be. Yeah. How the power of God used to move in our services. How the power of God used to flow in the church of God. How, how God, see, people want to, to diminish them saints of old. They want to diminish the way that they lived uh, and the power that they had and the glory that uh, flowed in them services was because uh, of what those men and women had, that power that they had. Uh, but somewhere along the line, this great church, uh, this great, I can talk about the church of God because I'm a member of it. Uh, I'm an ordained bishop in it, so I can talk about them. Uh, we blend our head in the laps of the world uh, and allow ourselves to fall asleep uh, and our power's been cut off. Uh, and we've tried to uh, replace the power uh, with emotionalism. Uh, we've tried to do just uh, as the Philistines were doing with Samson that day. Uh, just make sport for us. Uh, we're just making sport for the enemy. Uh, we're just going through the motions. Uh, we're just coming out entertaining. Uh, they brought Samson there that day uh, to be an entertainer for them. Church, uh, we are not a place to entertain people. Uh, but we are a place that souls uh, can be changed and lives can be changed. Samson said, I laid my head in the lap of Delilah. My locks are gone. But that lad possibly said, Oh, but Samson, they're back. So he looked at the lad, and he asked the lad that held him by the hand, he said, Suffer me to fill the pillars whereupon the house is. The lad let him fill it. Samson got his hands on those pillars. Samson prayed this prayer of repentance in verse 28 that I read to you as a text this morning. Samson called on the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once, O oh God, that I may once avenge the Philistines my two lives. He said, just avenge me this once, O oh Lord. We read on that his victory there that day was greater than all the victories of his life. Why? Because he did it again. And I preached this message before, and I preached it to you before, and I prayed that prayer, Lord, give me one more chance, and I won't mess it up. God is saying to somebody this morning, I'm still with you. My power is still available to you. Uh, but it's right where you left it at. It's right where you laid it down at. Uh, and God is telling us, uh, I will not anoint you while you're making sport for the enemy. Uh, I will not anoint you while you're there with your eyes poked out uh, and having a pity party uh, and saying nobody likes me and I've been driven out. Uh, I've been taken captive. I've been bound. Uh, he said, I will not anoint you in that place. Uh, but what did he say in his word? He said, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, uh, and I will give you rest. Uh, he will give victory. Uh, he will give uh, power. He will give anointing. Uh, you can't rise up again. You can't run again. Uh, you shall walk again. You shall fight again. Uh, you can be men and women of devotion. Uh, you can be like Samson and go out in a blaze of glory. Uh, or you can be uh, as other men of God who got up, uh, brushed themselves off, uh, and asked for the power of God, repented of their sins, uh, and go forth in victory. Uh, you're not a failure uh, because you failed. You're a failure uh, when you stay there and lay there uh, and wallow in it and say, well, the devil's got me. Uh, oh, he can have you uh, if you allow him to. Uh, but the Word of God tells us if you resist the devil, uh, after you submitted yourself to God, uh, you resist the devil. He's got to flee. Uh, he's got to be loose. God will bring the victory. Uh, but so many are like Samson. Oh, I failed. Come on. Yeah. I used to be. This used to be. The great church of God. Come on, come on. This used to be people that lived right, walked right. Yeah. And now our vision is gone. People are perishing lives are being tormented. We used to be <coughs> men and women of prayer, men and women of devotion, men and women of commitment. We used to be. Man, they used to have all night prayer meetings. Yeah. They used to call visitation on Saturday and the whole church would show up. Turn that neighborhood upside down. 
They used to call prayer meeting during the week. People would show up and pray. There would be times they didn't even have to call prayer meeting. Men would show up. This great church of God was started out of a prayer meeting. Men would get in there and begin to pray. Three or four men just begin to pray. Seek the face of God. So there has to be something more than this. Uh, well, that's the way it used to be. You know what? I, I'm getting sick of hearing uh, what it used to be. Because my God, uh, and my word says that my God changes not. He's the same yesterday, uh, today, and forever. Uh, it's time, church, that we go back. Uh, it's time that we go back. Uh, and when Jeremiah said to the people, he said, seek out the old paths. Uh, seek out the old landmarks. Walk therein. And it said there that they said we will not. That's the same answer. If I could talk, if I could ring up Brother Jeremiah today, I'd tell you, Brother Jeremiah, the same answer that you got then is the same answer we're getting today. I will not. I will not. Because people consider that I was in bondage. I was in a place that I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Couldn't be what I wanted to be. They fell asleep in the lap of the world and the power has been cut off and the power source has been gone and God said it's right there where you left it I'm right here where you left me come on back to me and that's what Samson did he repented of his body he repented of allowing himself to be seduced by that woman yeah. falling in love with that representation of the world many today have fallen in love it says Demas he's with us no more yeah. but Paul said he's with us no more because he fell in love with this present world yeah. word of God said Remember Lot's wife. She came out of Sodom, got delivered from Sodom. She looked back. Uh, she became a pillar of salt. We can think of so many today. We say they're not with us anymore because they love this present world. Uh, they fell in love with this present world. They fell asleep in this world's life. Uh, the power's gone. The source is gone. Uh, now they're out there making sport for the enemy, just as Samson was. Maybe you got loved ones there. Maybe you're there this morning. Think about all those things that we used to do. Brother Clark, I don't want to embarrass you. Can I use you this morning, brother? <laughs> brother Clark is my buddy. We spent a lot of time together talking, him testifying to me. One thing Brother Clark's told me that has stuck with me, he said, Brother Jamie, when I was 25 years old, I was on fire for the Lord. He said, man, it was just an excitement about church, an excitement about the things that come. He said, then I backslid on the Lord. And I was away from the Lord for, you say, 40 years? 45 years. 45 years. I was away from the Lord, making sport for the enemy. He was out there just being a sport. See, my dad, he'll, he'll see somebody that's acting up or doing whatever or giving them a hard time, he'll call him sport boy. Let me tell you something, sport boy. And that's what Brother Clark said he becomes sport to the enemy. Out there just wreaking havoc, getting into fights, and all kinds of other things he don't want us to know about, I'm sure. He was out there. And he said, Brother Jamie, he said, I've come back to the Lord. I'm living for the Lord now. He said, but I can't seem to feel that power and that fire that I felt when I was 25 years old. And then I'm reminded of the word of God. The two men were sent to spy on the land, Joshua and Caleb. Joshua became the leader that took Moses' place. And he called on his buddy Caleb that came back and gave a good report when Caleb was up in his years. Older brother Clark is now in his 80s. Joshua said, there's this mountain that needs to be taken. The enemy is there on that mountain. Caleb looked at him and he said, give me this mountain. He said, I've got the same strength that I had when we went and spied out that land, Joshua. That same, that same strength that was in me. Physically, I don't have that same strength. Uh, he said, but spiritually, I'm just as strong uh, as I was then. Uh, and the same thing is for Brother Clark this morning. That same power, that uh, same anointing that he had access to when he was 25 years old. Uh, he's got the same access to that power today. Uh, and Brother Clark, I believe this message is for nobody else. It's for you this morning. Uh, and I believe the Spirit of the Lord wants to say to you, uh, do it again, brother. Uh, do it again in the name of Jesus. Uh, why don't somebody? Do it again. That same power. You say, well, my body is failing. You say, I'm not as strong as I used to be. You may say, well, my vision is gone. You say, I may say, this body is breaking apart. Why don't you ever just put it to you simple? I'm an old man. I'm an old woman. But my God has not changed. My God still got that same power. That same anointing that flooded their soul all those years ago. Is that same anointing that flooded this place this morning? Shut up. Power, 
Glory. And I may have said, Samson, go ahead and do it again. God's saying to you this morning, it's not reminiscent of days gone by. Why don't you go ahead and do it again? Nobody lives that way anymore, brother. Nobody does that anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Preachers don't dance when they preach no more, brother. Jamie. You need to stop. People don't shout and get happy anymore about the glory that floods my soul. It's about time that the other half be told. Isn't that right, Sister May? Hallelujah. It says the half has not yet been told. Well, let it be told. If you can't get the, the, the report out there with half of it, don't tell them the whole story. Because there's joy that floods our soul. There's peace that floods our soul. And we know the story that took place. Uh, it's able to push with all of his might. And that great victory was fought there that day. Because he did it again. In closing, a sister, that we will come this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Feel the Spirit of God in this place this morning. Yes. And he's saying to somebody, do it again. Do it again. For those of you don't understand, you just don't understand. I don't have to understand. Some said, said Brother Jamie, I, I tried to explain to you, but you wouldn't understand. You don't understand the heartbreak. You don't understand the frustration. You don't understand what I've been through. You don't understand how I feel. No, I don't understand. I don't know all of the pains, the struggles, and the conflicts that you've gone through. But I know what I've been through. I know what I'm facing. I know how the devil desired to have me and desired to sift me as we as I began to testify in Sunday school this morning, telling you just about three men. I just began to think a little bit while I was sitting there uh, and began to think of every season of ministry in my life, began to think uh, of lives that have been impacted. Uh, and I'm praying this morning that one more uh, life will be touched. I'm praying this morning uh, that somebody can say, not dragging on Jamie White, uh, but to say his season of ministry here, uh, my life was changed by the gospel of priest. Uh, my life was changed uh, by that gospel message. Uh, why? Because I told the Lord uh, in that prayer closet, uh, in that trailer, uh, standing there in that closet, Lord, I'm going to just the Samson did, uh, but give me one opportunity, uh, and I won't mess it up this time. Uh, what are you saying, Brother Jamie? Uh, I want to preach like I used to preach. Uh, I want to pray like I used to pray. Uh, I want to pass like I used to pass. Uh, why do you want to do that? Because I want to see the victory that they used to see. Brother Jamie, I want what they used to have. I want that power of God that I used to have in my mind. Like it was when I was a kid. Like it was when I was a boy. And like it was when I sat on this pew and Brother Jack Beavers preached. That same anointing, that same power I want to name. Well, Pastor Beavers can't come back and preach to us today. But you can do it again. Church, you can do it again. God has got little lads, young people today, coming and looking at us. It's been in the church for so long. Said, so I heard about what y'all used to do. I heard, tell me, is it true this used to happen in church? Tell me, is it true that you, there was times that you never made it to Sunday school and people flooded the others? Yeah, that's true. And that excited young convert, that excited young child of God is saying, do it again. Do it again. I believe there's a demand that's coming from our young people today saying, we've heard about that power y'all talking about. I want to see it again. Do it again. Anybody want to see the power of God? Yeah. Like that again. Sam, she couldn't see it when he was out there making sport for the enemy. With his eyes plucked out, no vision. But he needed a reminder. He needed a reminder. You was a great man of faith. There's some of you here this morning believe the Word of God says it this way. You did run well. Is that what it says? You did run well. Who did hinder you that you were not away the truth? You did run well. Who have you been listening to? Surely it wasn't God and His Word. What have you allowed yourself to be kept in any way? Whose lap did you fall asleep in? When Jesus spoke to his disciples, he told them what others power they had access to. When God came into the garden, Adam, Adam, he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I knew that I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, 
Who told you that you were saved? You did run well. We started out well. Who did hinder you? Well, it was that preacher that hindered me. It was that brother that hindered me, that sister that hindered me. No. You allowed Satan to pluck your eyes out and to make sport of you. Now he's standing off in the corner giggling at you. <laughs> Look at him now. He got so much hatred. He got so much bitterness. I had a preacher telling me yesterday, he said, Brother Jamie, eight years of my ministry, I just got more and more and more bitter. He said that my ministry came about me, about making a name for myself, and no longer about lifting up the name of Jesus. A lot of folks are in that place today. And Satan's just laughing. Satan's just laughing. Romans 13, verses 11 and 12. For you who are asleep, wake up so you can hear this, because this is what the scripture says. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Talking about spiritual sleep this morning. There may be some that's physically asleep, I don't know. I may be paying attention to you, to tell you the truth. But there's some that's spiritually asleep this morning. If we can open our spiritual ears, we can hear them snoring. Some are asleep. They said, knowing the time is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation here than when we believe the night is far spent. Day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. What Paul said, he said he called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Now he's telling us if we fall asleep, it's possible that someone fall asleep spiritually. It's time to wake up. Do it again. Do what again, Brother Jerry? Put on the arm of light. Cast off that cloak of darkness, bitterness, anger, frustration, whatever it may be. Lay it aside. I love what Brother Shiloh said when he said about the blind man. Jesus come passing by. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He said he threw his cloak aside. That that showed him to be a blind man. He threw that aside. Came to him. We need to do that this morning. We need to hear the voice of God calling us. Throw aside that that identifies us with our defeat. That identifies us with what Satan has told we that we've become. See, he carried the label blind man. You may carry a label this morning. You may carry a label of, of whatever it may be. There's so many labels that we can carry. I won't begin to name them all. But you know the label that you've carried that you've been identified with. Don't you throw it aside this morning, that cloak of darkness. Put on that armor of light. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. As you're standing with me all over this house, don't pay attention to what your husband's going to do, your wife's going to do, your neighbor wants it beside you. I'll be praying for them, but it's not about them this morning. It's not individuals this morning. What are you going to do? Is there somebody that will say this morning, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. Somebody that wants to do it again, why don't you just step out this morning? You say, I'm going to do it again. I want to be the man of God that I once was. I want to be the man of God, the woman of God. Days gone by. Or I want to be what the Lord told me I can be. I'm going to do it again. Begin to flood these altars this morning. Just begin to cry out to the Lord. Begin to lay aside that cloak of darkness. Put on that armor of light this morning. Put on that robe of righteousness this morning. Begin to proclaim that power we have access to this morning. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be witnesses of me. Why don't you come this morning? Why don't you come this morning? Oh, Heavenly Father, today you see those gathered around these altars today in your life. Oh, say it, Lord. I've sung about it. I've even heard it preached. I've even experienced it in days gone by. 
But Lord, I haven't felt that joy of the Spirit in my soul in so long. I haven't given anything to God for you in a long time. Lord, I spent my mind this morning to this altar. I want to do it again. 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 Oh, Heavenly Father, today, God, do it again. Do it again in these altars. Do it again in these hearts. Do it again in these lives, dear God. Oh, let the power of the Holy Ghost be manifested. Let somebody's soul get on fire today, Lord. Oh, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost rise up within men and women today, Lord. Oh, let the God of the manifestation of your spirit be Lord. Oh, rest upon each heart, each life, each mind, each soul. Rise up within us. Let the gift of God be stirred up. Oh, deep within our hearts, deep within our souls, oh God. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Have your way in these altars this morning. Have your way in these altars this morning. 